Hi guys, welcome to this Web Design Touch screencast. My name is Ian and today we're going to have a look at Google Maps. Now, what you see in front of you here is more than likely going to be fairly familiar to you. This is a Google Map and even if you're not familiar with the area, which is in the middle of nowhere in uh, Australia apparently, um, you'll be familiar with the controls and the interface which is provided for you here by Google. This is very typical of the kind of map that you'll see uh, pasted into uh, a contact us page or uh, an about us page on any given sort of website. It's extremely easy using the uh, tools that Google provide plus a few parameters of your own to uh, paste this sort of thing into a website and you've probably had a go at that uh, uh, in the past. I personally have been recently relying on something else though because I think that this kind of thing is a little overly complex for a contact us page if I'm looking for a business address, I don't normally need to be playing around with uh, map tools or anything like that. So what I use these days is uh, the Google Static Maps API, which in a very similar way allows you to enter all kinds of parameters into an image uh, source URL, and it will serve you an image from the Google Maps uh, servers tailored to your specific requirements. So in this particular case, you can see three markers and you can see that the um, the map is centered here on Brooklyn Bridge and um, it's uh, extremely useful it's, it's just an image just like this particularly useful if you're looking at uh, responsive web design because images are extremely easy to make fluid whereas uh, iframes and other things that are pulled in from uh, from different tools can be a little awkward to manipulate so Instead of relying on JavaScript, we're going to use this image API and we're going to play with a responsive uh, layout. So this is the demo that I've built up. Um, it's very simple. It's based on the sort of changed version of the skeleton uh, framework. I've changed it around and made it mobile first and uh, altered it so that it's fluid. Uh, but you can see that it's uh, responsive and it's fluid and it's extremely simple. So that's what we're going to use. This, surprisingly enough, is where we're going to use, uh, where we're going to place our map image. Uh, so let's get going with that. First thing we're going to need is an address, which I'm going to grab from Envato.com, because we're going to use the address uh, of Envato HQ. Uh, okay, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to open up the project here in Coda, and you can see here that we have just three CSS files, these two have been used to build that demo and then we're going to be adding our changes into style CSS. Index.html is where we're going to be placing our image and this is the paragraph we just highlighted. So this is where our image is going to go. So we use an image tag and a source and I may as well give it an alt text as well. Uh, so that's an image tag as you'll all recognize it. Now this is the address I just grabbed. Uh, we're going to need to make that URL friendly so we need to remove all spaces and place a plus sign in there as well. Like so. You can also use uh, latitude and longitude coordinates as well. Uh, but addresses are often more simple so that's what we're going to use in this case. Uh, now I'm going to grab the rest of the URL from uh, where I have it over here, it will illustrate to you what we're doing. Now many of these parameters are optional. You can see that we have the base of our URL here. Uh, we've given it a size of 640 by 640 pixels and that is the maximum you are allowed using a free account which in our case we are doing. If you want a paid professional Google account then you can uh, go larger but uh, that's our limit in this case. We are determining a zoom level of 14 that determines how zoomed in you want to be onto your image um, and it defaults to 16 I think unless I'm mistaken but anyway uh, we want to use 14 in this case and we're using a road map as the uh, map type. This is where we begin to list markers in our case there's only going to be one but the marker is going to be uh, the color green and then we're going to place the address after that like this oh sorry I'm just pasted exactly the same thing again the address goes in after that like that 
uh, and then there remains just one more parameter the only required parameter that being sensor and that determines whether or not the uh, device in question is going to be detecting the user's location we set it to false because uh, that's not required in our case so there's our image it's going to pull our map image for us from the servers so if we open up Chrome again here you can see we have our image 640 by 640 and um, we have a marker placed there on the Melbourne uh, headquarters for Envato. Hi guys. Now this is a responsive layout and this uh, image has just burst out from the boundaries of our, of our layout so that's that's no good so the first relatively easy thing we can do is apply uh, what's become fairly standard as a, a way of making images fluid by giving them a maximum width of 100% which means that they are now it will now be constrained to the boundaries of its parent element and you can see that it stretches uh, and shrinks depending on the size of its containing element okay so that works pretty well uh, I don't like this for an obvious reason and that is that it renders the map fairly useless uh, at a smaller scale you can just about make out the marker but uh, you can forget reading any street street names or any other signs so that's fairly impractical so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the way I go about this and I'm going to use a technique that you may well have used up until recently for getting uh, border radiuses on uh, image elements uh, what we do is instead of uh, relying on the image itself we apply a wrapping element now this being an image you'd be advised to use a figure instead of a div or something like that in our case we're going to be using an anchor because I want this image to link to a more detailed image just to make it a little bit more useful if people do want those sort of controls that you'd get uh, in the kind of Google map we looked at earlier so uh, I'm just going to um, just going to get the address again. I'm going to go to Google Maps and I'm going to get a link which will. There we go. This is the link I want. There's the headquarters. And I can get a short URL like so. I'll copy that. And then this is the link I'm going to pop in there. So if people want to use more information regarding our. Uh, our map they can now click on it and be sent elsewhere for more information so having got our containing element uh, I'm going to give it a class just so we can target it in the CSS I'll call it Google map and then in our CSS what I'm going to do is make the image within it transparent by giving it an opacity of zero. Uh, if you want to be more uh, cross-browser friendly then you can use the, uh, the filter rule as well for uh, Internet Explorer. This will serve you pretty well for most modern browsers though. So we'll save that and our image has vanished but you can see by the cursor that the anchor element is still there. If we'd used display none then that would have just shrunk down the whole thing. So um, now what I need to do is actually apply an image of some kind to the Google Map element. If I just place a background of some kind of color, for example, uh, you'll see that it appears there. Uh, we could do with changing the display property in order to make sure that it does fill up the entire space of that image and you can see that it shrinks and grows with the image so now what we need to do is a little trick uh, we're going to change the background image to a URL and the URL we're going to use will be familiar to you because it's exactly the same URL that we've already called for our image uh, we want a background repeat of none 
and now if we check out our image there it is and you'll see that we're now using the same image as a background but the scale obviously isn't changing uh, because it's a background okay we could do with having our marker placed in the center that would be more useful so I'm going to place that by stating that the position is 50% and 50% which will center the whole thing in our containing element and of course irrespective of if it's large or small the scale stays the same our marker remains centered and uh, that's as simple as that you can see if I just check the inspector that we have here the static map which is being called and uh, it's only being called the once because uh, it's the same image so that's uh, pretty good for your uh, page load times as well you're not you're not relying on a separate image okay there's one more thing we're going to do to this image during this tutorial and that is to prepare it for retina displays now retina display will take this image and it will uh, owing to its higher pixel density effectively double the size uh, of it and therefore the quality will be reduced so what we're going to do is use a media query and we're going to rely on one of uh, one more of Google uh, Maps parameters to swap it out for a higher quality image so that's what we'll do now uh, so we go into our uh, CSS here and now uh, the media query is pretty complex it looks a bit like this that's only because of all the browser prefixes we have media only screen which uh, is pretty standard stuff the only being a keyword which is going to cut out uh, Internet Explorer from the equation and then you can see we're using this device pixel ratio which is more or less the same for Mozilla uh, Opera and WebKit and then here you have the uh, proposed standard Mozilla have this absurd uh, double hyphen here I'm not exactly sure what the reasoning behind that is but that's what it is and Opera require a fraction as well that's also worth noting uh, but we're pointing at devices which have uh, a pixel ratio of two twice as many pixels um, rather uh, that any given pixel a normal pixel will have two across the top two down the side uh, making for four pixels jammed into a standard one pixel uh, if you have a retina uh, device of some kind you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so this is the media query and uh, what we're going to do under these circumstances is we're going to change our background image we're going to use exactly the same image effectively uh, oh I completely missed out my uh, element we're going to point at the the Google uh, map anchor element of course and it's the background image of that that we're pointing to um, it's exactly the same although we're going to add one more parameter and that is scale 2 uh, as a non-payment account, a, a free Google account you have access to uh, to 2 if you have a professional account you can also use 4 as the scale uh, but what this is going to do is pull in the same image that we've required uh, but it's going to be twice as big the scale is going to be uh, uh, much improved so whereas we're actually asking for a 640 by 640 image uh, it's going to be 1280 by 1280 in size uh, now saving that isn't going to illustrate anything so for the time being I'm just going to pull it outside of that media query otherwise you won't see anything so I'll save that uh, and there again uh, is our demo and you can see that the image being used as a background now is this uh, colossal version twice as big uh, if this was just an image then it would be once again restrained to its boundaries and you wouldn't necessarily notice any difference um, but it's being used at one to one scale as a background image so you can see a difference uh, and again that's pretty pointless because on a retina display that would still be blown up uh, and look hopeless because it's effectively an image 1280 by 1280 so what we need to do is shrink down the uh, the size of the background using one more property uh, that being background size uh, and we want to 
restrict that to the size of the image that we're talking about, that being 640 by 640. Uh, so there we go, that's it. And it looks, to all intents and purposes, exactly like our original image, uh, although uh, we happen to know that it's... Well, I can show you in the resources. Uh, it's... which one is it? Yes, it's one of these. It's this huge image here that's being pulled in, like so. Okay. So that has made our... Uh, obviously, before I go, I'm going to just pop that back into the media query, just to clarify. That's only going to be applied to devices with a higher pixel ratio density. Uh, so that's it. That That is our our Google map. It's uh, fluid, it's, re it's responsive, it remains at the same scale so it's useful. It links to uh, a more useful map uh, and it's uh, protected for retina displays as well. So I think that's a pretty useful thing to do. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time on Web Design Touch. Cheers.